Managing Trustee, Srimati Saraswati Kannayan, Dr. Priya Satish Prabhu, Ma'am, Principal, Dr. A. Ponusam, Convenier, Dr. S. Anuratha, Ma'am. I extend my auspicious welcome to our Chief Guest of this evening, Dr. Bhaskar Bhavuji, Sir, Associate Professor of Mathematics, Anna University, MIT Campus. He has a 27 years of teaching experience and a broad knowledge in graph theory. Welcome you, sir. And we, I welcome each and every participants. Sir, please welcome, sir. You can proceed, sir. I request all the participants to mute your audio. I request all the participants to mute your audio. Sir, so, so you can proceed, sir. So, can you hear my voice, sir? You can proceed, sir. I request all the participants to pin Bhaskar Babuji's presentation. You can see his PPT. Sir, can you hear my voice, sir? You can proceed, sir. So your voice is not audible, sir? So your voice is not audible, sir? Hello. Hello, sir. Sir, your voice is not audible, sir. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why it's not audio, but I am getting clearly your voice. Ah, uh ah. -huh. Mic unmute, panna. Ah, uh, panna ch, panna ch. Mic unmute, panna ch. Okay, okay. Now okay, madam. Unmute. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Now it's clear. 
啊，忘了忘了忘了。Can you hear now, please? Uh, hello. So your voice is audible, sir. You can proceed, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I join with the uh, Hindustan College to welcome all the participants. Uh, What a wonderful day! This lockdown period, uh, the institution has given a chance for all of us to meet through this uh, occasion, the two days national seminar. Uh, today's uh, uh, talk is going to be on encryption techniques through graph networks. Right. So, what is this uh, topic about? Is that uh, how do we do uh, communicate uh, secret messages? Uh, what is the basic tool? The basic tool of communication is mathematics. Uh, the basic, very very basic fundamental is number theory. So, without this, we cannot do a beautiful secret communication. So, cryptography is a beautiful area. Uh, which uh, is very very important for all secret communication. So, form the tool is number theory, but what will be the platform? My platform is going to be graphs. So, graph networks. So, what are the techniques we are going to use? Uh, one technique is uh, about uh, number theory, and another technique here we are going to use the platform is graph graph labeling something. So, let us uh, now uh, go into the detail. The German mathematician Kronecker wrote, "God created the natural numbers; else is the work of the man." The beautiful statement. So, cryptology consists of uh, cryptography and uh, cryptanalysis. This, this, the, the, the word cryptography is derived from the uh, Greek uh, uh, word crypt. The Greek word crypt means meaning hidden graphene. Uh, just a minute. The word cryptography is derived from the uh, Greek word uh, "cryptos," means hidden, and "graphene" means uh, meaning to uh, write. So, cryptography is the art uh, and science of concealing the meaning of confidential communications from all except the intended recipients. Well, so cryptanalysis deals with the breaking secret messages. Uh, during the World War II, thirty thousand people were engaged in cryptographic work. The breaking of the Japanese Purple Mission Code by U.S. cryptanalysts shortly before the attack of Pearl Harbor led to Allied victory in the Pacific. Today, the U.S. government and the business employ tens of thousands of people and spend billions of dollars annually on this cryptology. Okay, let us take the plain text. What is the plain text? The original message which we want to transmit into a secret form. That is our plain text. Then, what is meant by cheaper text? It is the secret version. It's a secret version. So plain text is the original message. Crypt text is the secret version. The key is an explicit uh, formulation of the chipper. So the job of the cryptanalyst to discover the key and then break the code. So everyone wants to keep the thing secret. Keep uh, put a lock. So who will prepare the key? The person who prepare the locks will prepare the key. So the lock and key must be done by the same person. So if the if the key is very very uh, what do you say easy. Then the lock can be opened very easily without breaking it. So we are all interested about uh, the uh, password, okay, the PIN number, okay, and everything has to be kept secret. Even if you lock the house and go, you put a double uh, door, a grill door inside a bureau, all things. But still, the robber comes and thefts. But fine. Uh, so how much secured you are? That is what today's story. So you are things. So even now we are speaking through our. Uh, Google Meet and other things are we secured? So, what are the measures to be taken to be secured? Uh, can I check that? Can you hear all of you, please? Hello, hello. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, so today the most important thing is uh, secure security. So, how much our laptop is secured? How much our system is secured? How much all our confidential matters are secured? So, how to keep this secured? How to transform or how to transmit the information? So, defense requires is more important. So, let us see today uh, the basic things uh, uh, before going into the exact thing. Uh, 
So the process of converting plain text uh, to chipper text is called encryption. And converting device is called encryption. This is the first one. Okay, let us take the reverse process. The reverse process by intent, a recipient who knows the key, he will decrypt and accomplish the decryption. So the encryption is sending the information, the coding. Reverse process is decrypting. So encrypting and decrypting may be algorithms by people or computers. Thus, the method used by the intended receiver to recover the original message is called put together crypt analysis. Put together crypt analysis. Fine. So, crypto system for encrypting a plain text to ciphertext is using a key. Fine. The chipper presents five types of crypto systems: a fine, hill, exponential. RSA and NASCAP based on modular arithmetic. Beautiful concept, modular arithmetic. So, a fine chipper, hill chipper, exponential, RSA, NASCAP based on modular. The first three is conventional, private. The last two is public. So, suppose if I take uh, I lock a room and then I, I, I just throw it inside your campus, I challenge you that, okay, it's inside the campus, come and find out. That is a public. But if I close and give the key to my friend and come, nobody knows, it's private key, only myself and my friend will be knowing. So plain, uh, that is a private key, public key. So public key is challenging for us, so how to break it, I challenge you, the key is inside your campus, but it's very easy to find, but still I want to make it tougher and tougher. So breaking public key is, should be made very tough, so that's the how number theory stands for us. Fine, so this is the idea. You can look at the chart, the plain text, encryptor, okay, then cheaper text. So the person receives and he knows the formula or the key uh, decoding, he decrypts. Also the plain text, okay, using the key, he gets back the plain text using the key. Now, uh, look at the other way. Suppose uh, if you don't have the key, then there somebody has to break the key and find some interfere, break the key and come. Fine, next. Let us uh, introduce a very, very basic thing to make you interested in the subject of uh, fine chippers. In all crypto systems, we first translate each letter to a number. So that is the first step. A letter, uh, English language, uh, alphabets are 26 alphabets are there, A to Z. So let me convert this, translate this letter to a number. The conventional way of doing this is by numbering the letters A to Z by 0 to 25. You can have 1 to 26, but 0 to 25, beautiful concept, modulo 26. What are the reminders, uh, what are the reminders you get uh, when you divide by 26, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 25. So modulo arithmetic stands there. So I am going to take, uh, uh, assign the letters A to Z, the ordinal number 0 to 25. A is 0, then B is 1, and uh, C is 3, and so on, Z is 25. Using this scheme, we can translate the plain text to uh, a numerical message uh, which is uh, then encrypted into numerical cheaper text. Then each number uh, will be replaced by the letter. Okay, let us see by an example. Look at here uh, the ordinal numbers assigned for the uh, alphabets A to Z is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 11, L is 11, then U is 20, V is 21, W is 22, X is 20, so on, Z is 25. So each letter we have an ordinal number. Fine. In substitution chipper, we substitute each letter alphabet to each letter the plain text. So let us look uh, what is the Caesar chippers. Before Christ, 50 years, around 50 BC, the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar, uh, lived in 100 to 44 BC, sent encoded message to his general Marcus during the Garlic War using the substitution chipper based on modular arithmetic. So such a wonderful topic uh, before Christ. Look at this before Christ in the war using modular arithmetic. Fine. So what is this this uh, chipper does? So let us now take uh, the uh, alphabets. Okay, the measure we have to communicate the message. What I do is I just make uh, three places to the right to move, shifting three places. That means whenever I find A, I will make it as D. Whenever I find a B in my text, I make it as Z. Whenever I find a M, I make it as P. So likewise, I do the coding. Okay, I do this uh, uh, wonderful work. X becomes A. After 20, X becomes A. I'm moving three places. It's a cycle. Y becomes B and Z becomes C. 
So the 26 alphabets are being shifted each alphabet to three places right. Fine. So what is this happening? Let P denote the ordinal number of the plain text. So once the information is given to me, each letter is converted to ordinal number. I add three to it. I add three to P plus three, P plus three. And then I take modulo 26. So what happens here? Uh, C is the new ordinal number for me. That is your chipper text for each letter. The C is a chipper can be described by the congruence. So C is congruent to P plus 3 mod 26. This both P and C lies between 0 and 25. So whatever number is there, I add 3 to it because I'm shifting 3 positions. Okay, now let us see the next slide example. So this is the message, have a nice day. A encryption message. I have planned to communicate this message, have a nice day using C share key. What I do is I first take the letter H. H stands seventh position. A zero. V is twenty fourth position. E is fourth. So likewise, A is zero. Have a nice day. Last way twenty four. So I have assigned the ordinal numbers from the table. Okay, zero to twenty five. Now I apply the C set transformation. C is congruent to P plus three mod twenty six. So seven plus three is ten. 0 plus 3 is 3, 21 plus 3 is 24. Likewise, I keep adding number 3. That is my formula. I'm using congruence. C is congruent to P plus 3 motors. So the last one here, but luckily I had only one number very close to 25. That's 24. 24 plus 3 is 27. If I take 27, 27 mod 26 is 1. The remainder is 1. So such way I have taken here. I have only one chance here to do this. Fine, now I have done the resulting numbers. So now let me uh, check, substitute the letters back and bring back the coded message. Okay, so this is the text. Have a nice day. I put five in a block. So H A V E have yeah has become K D Y H D. Five space. Have a nice day. N I C E D has become five. Yeah. D, D is here, A, Y is here. So this is my resulting chipper text. This is what I'm going to communicate to the person, the opposite side, who will receive the message. And he knows what is happening. C is congruent to P plus 3 mod 26. We both know this. Okay. So he will take back. Uh, he will do that. He will subtract 3 and then uh, go back the reverse process. See, this happens, right? When, uh, when, uh, when you go to a... Uh, a house, your friend's house, or small kids will come and you will ask them, okay, think a number in your mind. Okay, fine. I think a number in my mind, 1 to 10. I ask the child to add 5, then multiply by 2, then subtract 3, then add 5 or 6. Ask to tell the number back. Yes, the number is this. Then you do the reverse process. Uh, minus 5 means add 5. So from the back, you come reverse. So such a a uh, simple idea here we are using modular arithmetic so some more toughness is given but this is simple linear uh, p is congruent to c plus 3 Here you can multiply you can multiply and add so any linear idea so we'll go slowly go to that so look at the example we come back for that example decrypting the chipper text okay what the person will do he will receive the message he will write the uh, number ordinal number from the table Okay, these numbers are 10, 3, 24, 7, and so on. One. Using the uh, decrypting formula, reverse process, earlier C is equal to P plus 3, now P equal to congruent to C minus 3 mod 26. So, you'll subtract 10 minus 3, 7, 3 minus 3, 0, 24 minus 3, 21, so on. And finally, if you look at this, 1 minus uh, uh, 3 is minus 2, but minus 2 is... Uh, not allowed so what is minus 2 mod 26 is 24 okay so 24 has come back now again so we will uh, look at this uh, translate the numbers back to the alphabetic format which is the reverse information have a nice to a uh, as we know english we can break this we can break this right to recover the original message so this is an example very simple example you can find this example any number theory textbooks uh, available Okay, so I'll put at the end all these things. Fine. So this is the idea now. So whenever you have 
can do reverse process uh, you do the reverse process then you can uh, uh, get back the message but reverse should exist there comes algebra for us so you have studied uh, maybe the participants uh, most of them may be pg students ug students and uh, faculty members such as scholars i'm doing it very simple way so let me tell like this so you study about the semi group uh, group uh, abelian group uh, then slowly you go to consider cyclic group uh, then uh, uh, you have uh, other concepts uh, uh, like uh, rings and then finally you go to field you know very well what is a field multiplicity inverse exists also additive inverse exists so when inverse exists uh, it becomes a field with all kind of conditions so even anything been kept inside the field it's been taken back you see a treasure oh i got a treasure my father's father's father has kept something inside when i dig a well i get back the uh, beautiful treasure which he had so inverse process whatever you keep it inside if you want to take it back but if your uh, uh, inverse does not exist then what is the use of it so algebraic field we require a field to hide things take it back possible so inverse is a beautiful process so that is the basic uh, algebra for giving more and more difficulty so suppose the uh, y is equal to mx plus c is a straight line okay then what is x x is equal to y minus c by m if y is equal to mx plus c is a straight line then x is equal to y minus c by m okay fine of course with all uh, other conditions uh, uniqueness and other things fine in your modulo 26 okay so if you if you if you keep on uh, doing uh, tougher and tougher suppose you give a quadratic a cubic then it becomes difficult really. there will be more than one inverse if you have x square term the quadratic then you have two inverse the problem starts so likewise so you, you keep doing things fine right so our idea is how to do this uh, encryption description using graph labeling for that i also need to uh, brush you little in labeling what is the labeling of a graph? I hope many people know about graphs. Graph is a tuple which has vertices and edges. Okay, graph labeling uh, is an assignment. Uh, they will state their vertices or edges are both subject to certain conditions. So this labeling graph started by Rosa in 1967. Okay, so they have uh, useful models, uh, broad range of applications you would have seen, plenty of applications in graph labeling. But today, uh, we are going to give an application of graph labeling to do this encryption and decryption. Fine. Uh, if the useful survey you can see by J. Gallen, and uh, many types of labelings are there. Graph labelings are there. That is uh, harmonious, magic, graceful, anti-magic, uh, uh, prime, cordial, and so on. So I am. I would like to. Uh, what do you say? Uh, give you with importance. Uh, focus on magic and anti-magic labeling. Okay, after some time, so that is what we require for us. So I will skip certain things uh, which is uh, not uh, uh, exactly required for us. So the very oldest labeling, the graceful labeling. Okay, so uh, there are still conjecture is there to be solved. Okay, uh, the question mark is there, graceful labeling, the trees and solved, so on. Then harmonious labeling. Uh, this is uh, another labeling. What I require now, I'm just uh, pushing my uh, PPT. I'm going to do what I require magic labeling. Okay. 1963, Sedlak introduced the magic labeling for a graph uh, which is defined as a bijection f uh, of the edge set to the positive integers. But with the condition, but with the condition uh, f of uh, ei is not equal to f ej. Uh, yes. PPT not visible. I see. Hello. 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 Sir. 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 PPT is visible. Sir. Not visible, sir. Visible, sir. Visible. Oh, sir. Visible, sir. Visible. Somebody has. The person is. One person has sent a message oh, to my okay. mobile. <laughs> okay. Okay. I. Some PPT is not visible, Somebody sir. Somebody has. Sir. Hello. We are participants. Kindly pin. Dr. Babuji sir's presentation, then only you can see his presentation. I can continue, right? Yes, sir, please, sir. It's visible, sir. You continue, sir. Okay, no, many are sending messages uh, to the mobile that the PPT is not visible. 
sir it's visible sir it's clearly visible sir clearly visible okay okay because uh, uh, i received some i think they wrongly okay, pinned okay. uh, uh, yeah, the thing i got the message now it is visible they are telling okay i will not bother about that i'll continue madam thank you thank you yes sir thank you sir thank you yeah in 1963 sedlak introduced the magic labeling uh, the first one he says uh, if you give uh, if you give the label for the edges the first integers then it should be distinct that is no two edges receive the same uh, label then if you take a vertex any vertex uh, sum up all the label of the edges incident on it that is sigma f of e e belong to b sets then it should be same if that is same for all the vertices it is said to be magic vertex magic this what sedlak has been given definition In sixty-three, then seventy, Coates and Rosa defined magic labeling of graph as a bijection. Yeah. Excuse me, uh, sir. Yes, please. Screen is screen is not visible, sir. Hello. Screen screen is not visible, sir. The slides are not visible, sir. Not visible. Slides slides are not visible to me, sir. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Dear participants, don't interrupt in between. Dear participants, don't interrupt in between. this I'll scroll down this. Okay. I have to go to the slide back. Uh, maybe I'll start uh, slide number. Yeah. Hello. I'll continue. Can I continue? Yes, sir. Please continue, sir. Please yeah. continue, sir. Yeah, yeah. In quotes, and I I request all the participants don't interrupt in between. Okay, thank you. So thank you, sir. Sorry thank for the interruption, no sir. You can continue, sir. Thank you, thank you. In seventy, uh, quotes and Rosa, uh, they gave a, a bijection function for it's also called total labeling both vertices and edges for both vertices and edges. So you take an edge x y and then uh, To label for vertices and edges from one, two, three, so on up to number of vertices and edges, modulus of V union E. So uh, f of x plus f of y plus f of x y. Label of x vertex, label of the vertex y, and label of the edge x y. You add these three; they should be constant for all the edges x y. If that is the case, they say it is uh, magic uh, labeling, edge magic labeling, or total edge magic total labeling. Edge magic total labeling it's called, but suppose they are distinct. F of x plus f of y plus f of y it's called anti magic. That will come later. So in this magic labeling, if you give priority for the vertices, uh, one to modulus of v. There is n vertices are there. You give one to n for vertices first, and then you give n plus one, n plus two up to n plus m for the edges. That is uh, the priority is given for first vertices. That is. Called super edge magic. That is called so. Mostly, we mathematician we read we require discipline always zigzag uh, q for vertex q for edge and compacted. That will not be nice. So if you have a disciplined way of ordering way, of, it's called super edge magic label. Fine. The later valleys and other people introduced vertex magic total labeling in 1999. So not only for the edge, even for the vertices, you can do total magic and then count for the vertices. Suppose you take a vertex, any vertex, then take the label of vertex f of u plus sigma f of v u. That is all the edges uh, incident on the vertex v that will get the sigma f of v plus that original vertex labeling f of v. If this put comes to be constant for all k for all the vertices, is called vertex magic total label. Again, you give the similar uh, uh, what I say priority for all the vertices. What's called super vertex magic level. Okay. So if you see this example, I am taking a path P six. Uh, I am giving total labeling that is for both vertices and edges. One, two, 
3, then A4, 5, 6. So all the six vertices are given priority 1 to 6, labeled first. Now the five edges are given 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Very simple example I have taken. Now this is called super uh, labeling because vertices are given first and then edges, not the exact way. Fine, look at this edge 1 plus 11 plus 4 or 11 plus 1 plus 4 is going to be 12, 16. 10 plus 4 plus 2, 16. 9 plus 2 plus 5, 16. 8 plus 5 plus 3, 16. 7 plus 3 plus 16. So all the edges receive the same counter, k equal to 16. So it's called magic, edge magic, super edge magic labeling for path basics. Okay, now this example, second one gives super vertex magic labeling. Super vertex, in vertex magic, I give priority here for edges 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Look, the order is like this. And then for the vertices, 6, 5, uh, I give it this 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So this is a pattern. Just like that, you cannot get it. But it's been proved for not only P, this is an example for P9, but it's been proved for path. So the procedure is there, the pattern comes out, the algorithm is there to work all these things. Fine. Now, what is the here? 17. I'm getting 17. For this vertex is 17, and this edge incident on this is 4. 21. 17 plus 4, 21. Next, to take 9. Two edges are incident. 4 plus 8 is 12. 12 plus 9 is 21. Take this vertex 10. 10 plus 2 edges incident. 8 plus 3, 21. So 11 plus 10, 21. 12 plus here you have 9, 21. Similarly, the last one 16 plus 5, 21. So so it's comparatively uh, vertex uh, magic uh, is very difficult compared to edge magic so there stands here the mathematical skill okay how to label just like that trial and error is not possible that's a pattern that's a theorem proof is there everything is available on the internet in my own paper right. various type of magic labelings there come uh, you can see that uh, notation you can use the notation one zero means uh, uh, label vertex don't label it okay so if you do the vertex labeling one to p and do the same business for the edges it's constant it's called edge magic label similarly you can like label the vertex and then uh, do not label the edge you can think of the vertex magic common count such that f u plus f p is a common count k3 then don't label the vertex label only the edge it's called zero one labeling zero one labeling in zero one labeling, I can think about vertex magic and they call it edge magic. So, like this, the ideas uh, keep going. The definitions are there. I give vertices, uh, I don't give for vertex, I give for the edges one tick you and see that take every vertex, I see the count of the edges incident on the vertex. So, what happens is that if it's common, it's magic as a scientific. So, there it goes. Still, the trees are open. So edge magic total labeling is still unproved for past 40 50 years for trees okay so that is a question mark and solved the problem fine so these are all available in the electronic journal of combinatorics updated uh, in 2019 uh, december j a gallon has updated uh, and it's keep on updated fine now anti magic uh, we also require anti magic concept for us today so 1990, Henserfield and Ringel introduced the concept of anti-magic. An anti-magic labeling of a finite, simple, undirected graph with P vertices and Q edges is a bijection. And you just want to Q such that the vertex sum are pairwise distinct, whereas the vertex sum at the vertex U is the sum of the label of the edges incident on such vertex. So if the count is common, it's called magic. If the count of the vertices is uh, what do you say, distinct, it is anti-magic. So, after that, uh, in 2000, uh, uh, AD anti-magic total labeling was found. So, this is another beautiful concept. See, when you want to prove that, I, I give you five numbers, uh, say, prove that it is distinct. I give you N numbers, uh, check whether it is distinct. You have to check it. You have to check it. Suppose you give a, uh, write an algorithm like a label. Uh, okay, I have X1, X2 up to X100. 
uh, find out uh, all 100 numbers are distinct, then you will write a program, uh, take one by one x1, x2, x3, i is equal to i plus 1. Check with the previous jetta, the repetition is there. No, it's uh, no, no repetition, that means distinct. But if you have a pattern in the 100 numbers, an arithmetic progression, an arithmetic progression, then it becomes a beautiful uh, mathematical uh, idea to say that it's distinct. What is the pattern? Suppose I have a first number is smallest number is A, uh, then the next number comes by the adding D, then the next number adding A plus 2D, A, A plus 2D, A plus 3D, A plus N minus onto D, this is the nth term. So this is an arithmetic progression. So then it is easy for us to say it is anti-magic. So, so a beautiful name is given that is called uh, AD edge anti-magic total load, AD like arithmetic. So this is another beauty, next concept, fine. Look at the example here. Uh, we have a path P6, 1, 2, 3, then 4, 5, 6, and then 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This becomes easy. This is where the trick is there. So look at the count for the edge. 7 is the label of the edge. 7 plus 1 plus 4, 12. So 12 is the number. This number, 8 plus 2 plus 4, 14. This is uh, 16. 10 plus 5 plus 18, 11 plus 20. So you can see that common difference is 2, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So this is called A, A is 12, D common difference is 2. So A, D, H, anti magic total. This has been done for the cycle C5. So this has given uh, another way of research, A, D, anti match. So Becca, uh, Miller and other people introduced the notion of AD vertex anti-magic in 2000. For a graph uh, with the uh, function mapping from vertices and edges to set 1 to uh, modulus of V union E, AD edge anti-magic total labeling if uh, F of V plus sigma F of U, that vertex plus all edges inside on the vertex. This can be seen that if it comes to be distinct, that's called vertex. Uh, anti magic. In the earlier it was AD edge anti magic total labeling. Now it is AD vertex anti magic. So look at the difference between these two. Again, this is a bit difficult compared to uh, this is a bit difficult compared to previous uh, uh, what do you say the uh, edge anti magic. This is edge anti magic, but vertex anti magic is uh, uh, still tougher. So here's an example for a vertex anti -magic. So the labels are given 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, C5. Then uh, you have 9, 8, 7, 6, and 10. So if you count and see the common difference is 1. Very beautiful, it's common. Difference. So it's a successive number, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. So, so 9 plus, this is going to be small, uh, 9 uh, for vertex, sorry, for the vertex. 1 plus 9 plus 10, okay, 1 plus 9 plus 20. Uh, for this vertex, it is going to be uh, 9 plus 8, 17 plus 2, 19. It's going to be uh, 10, 18, uh, going to be 17. So, and this is going to be 6, uh, 20, 11, 21. So, uh, start with 17, uh, 18, 19, 20, 20. So, beautiful. Uh, labeling anti magic progression. Okay. So, in this survey uh, in 2004, myself I introduced uh, edge by magic total labeling. Uh, other name is given as 1 1 edge by magic in 2004. So, here instead of having magic, uh, I thought of why don't we have two numbers con common counts k1, k2 uh, for the edge? You take any edge uv. Uh, f of u plus f of v e plus f of uv, you should have one constant k and if you have two constants k1 and k2, instead of telling magic, I said by match. Again, if you have the discipline for first vertices, then it's called super edge by magic labeling. It was proved for many simple classes of graphs, standard structures, totally edge by magic concept. So this is an example. A uh, path P7, I take, uh, this is very easy that 1 to 7, run 1 to 7, but here it becomes tough when you concentrate on the edges, so 8, 9, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13. 
This is only a sample what I have given. If you go for PN, then the procedure is there for this. So proof is there for us. It's available in open access. So there are two constants identified. 13 plus 3, 16. 11 plus 5, 16. 9 plus 7, 16. So these three edges are received 16. Look at here. 12 plus 9, 21. 10 plus 11, 21. 8 plus 13, 20. So this gives me 50%. Uh, that is another beauty in uh, the uh, path. 50% uh, uh, of the edges receive one common count, uh, and 50% of it. This is another beauty, but it is not possible in a cycle. Okay, that's a difference between graph to graph. But most of the work which we have done uh, along with my students are giving 50-50. One 50% of edges gives one constant, 50% of the other constant, and also it was unique. That is the beauty. Now look at this uh, K23 complete bipartite graph. Uh, so K2 here and the 3 here, uh, the same idea, two constants were given here, 14 and 15. Okay, this uh, I'm not going to use uh, uh, in my uh, encryption, but still uh, it is there. Uh, let me, we also work in this prime labeling uh, for the vertices. Uh, we assign the labels 1 to modulus of V and uh, see that the edge will receive, uh, uh, there is an edge in the graph. Whenever there is an edge in the graph, the two inside of the edges <coughs> will label relatively prime. GCD is 1. So beautiful concept is prime labeling. So look at this. Uh, 1 is relatively prime to all numbers. Fine. There is an edge. Uh, two, two consecutive numbers are relatively prime. So it's a simple example. So there was an unsolved problem that all trees were uh, having prime labeling. Of 2011, it was proved. The result was proved. Fine. Then cordiality, uh, cordial labeling. So cordial labeling, I'll just quickly say that uh, if you give uh, vertices 0 and 1, uh, it's an, uh, then the difference uh, between them is modulus is either 0 or 1. So 1 and 1 gives 0. 0 and gives 1 or minus 1, but modulus is 1. So you just see the graph uh, after giving the induced label for the edges, uh, this uh, uh, formula uh, for where there's an edge, you do this business for the edge and give. And if you count the number of zeros and number of uh, ones, okay, for vertices, it does not differ by one. Similarly, if you count the number of vertices, number of zeros and ones for the edges, the difference between them does not Suppose there are 10 edges, uh, you'll get 5 zeros and 5 ones for it. Suppose there are 13 edges, uh, you get uh, 5 zeros and uh, uh, what do you say, uh, 6 zeros and 7 ones or 7 zeros and 6 ones. So uh, that cordiality is maintained, sharing is there 50 50. If not 50, one like greater or smaller. So that's why the name cordial left. So then later prime labeling and cordial mixed together, they got prime cordial. So in 2005, Sundaram Pondraj Swamsudam, they introduced the idea. Okay, the same idea, GCD is uh, 1, you put 1. GCD is more than 1, it is uh, put 0. So again, uh, the idea prime cordial labeling. Fine, all these things I am not going to use in my thing. Uh, let me give a, before going to the exact uh, 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 idea of encryption. Uh, uh, I quickly show you a small application of uh, fundamental theory of arithmetic uh, because uh, the time now is 3 4 40. I had to rush up with the main thing of graph coding. It's an old work, a uh, new type of coding using the uh, labeling technique. Okay, you know, fundamental theorem of arithmetic uh, any uh, number. Uh, uh, what is a uh, any positive integer that is uh, uh, can be expressed uniquely as a product of primes. So any composite number can be written as a product of powers of primes. That is fundamental theorem. The German uh, logician Gödel used the this result to code a finite sequence of numbers. Let us go to the example. So this is the uh, Gödel system of coding. Uh, the plan is that Gödel has put a sequence and communicated numbers. Very old one. So he raises uh, P1 power N1, P2 power N2, Pn power Nk. So what is the idea is put the prime numbers in order, except 1, 2, then 3, then 5, then 7, uh, wide one. So in that order, uh, he will just communicate this number N1, N2. Suppose you look at the example 3, 1, 2, 0, 2. 
That means the person who receives this code, this Godel number coding, he will transform this into number. <coughs> uh, first prime is 2, so 2 power 3. Second prime is 3, so 3 power 1. Third prime is 5, 5 power 2, 7 power 0, then 11 power 2. So the number is 72,600. So the encoded message is, this is very old system by Godel, Godel number coding. So what I thought is, uh, okay, let us uh, take this fundamental theorem of arithmetic uh, uh, decompose into k prime factors a number n i write this product of all of primes so this is the idea so take a number 360 which i like very much okay so 360 i write into product of powers of primes 2 power 3 3 power 2 5 power 1 well i'll take three vertices because three primes are involved p1 p2 p3 p1 p2 p3 v1 v2 v3 i assign 2 5 and uh, 2 3 and 5 for these uh, vertices and the powers i share it I share it here uh, 2 power 3 so this will be 2 and it's not 5 this is 1 there's a mistake here this is not 5 this is 1 this is 1 because 5 raised to the power this is 1 now this is 1 so 1 plus 2 is 3 2 raised to power 3 this is 3 power 2 so 3 power 2 5 power 1 2 power 3 this is not 5 this is uh, uh, I forgot to remove this 5 as 1 5 so I get back the result from the graph so this is the graph which we communicate so the vertices uh, are given the prime numbers okay and the edges are given so this is what this is what a world in 2005 we did this work uh, and then uh, how to decode the label of the edges uh, and get back using this formula and it's not unique so that's a problem so then we have to do some construction uh, adjustment so we had a dead state uh, state with the number one okay number one and then try to adjust that uh, there's an algorithm it's also available a very big number if you take uh, uh, you can break this in a unique way we found so for that we introduce one here it is one here and then try to put this whatever you require here try to do the adjustment here two power five okay two power five so this is two power seven two power seven so this two i put here this is a one raised to power anything is same so i put a two here that comes out here what this is. next <coughs> so the main idea <coughs> the encryption uh, 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 decryption numbers using uh, labeled graphs. It's a combinatorial technique. Okay, so let me uh, take this. The idea is excuse me. I will take the number partition number into using modulo class. The number maybe the pin number, your bank pin number, your password, uh, your number ID number. Something, something, a number officially is a secret number. I want to communicate. So partition the number into modulo class Z3 using modulo class Z3 into three parts. Fine. And uh, uh, I, I will take a complete graph KN. Probably today I'll take uh, the K9, uh, the largest single digit number. Then I'll give label for the graph, vertices and edges. Generally, I give a, we used to give only single label for vertex or an edge. That's what we have seen in magic antimony. Now here the trick is that I want to introduce this modular arithmetic, that idea. So I give pair labeling. So this is the one idea we have done it in 2012 uh, along with my student. So this is uh, alpha and beta uh, first component uh, and gamma second component. I'll let you know this next slides. Okay, fine. So and uh, not only that, I have to take the triangles in my complete graph. So, how many uh, vertices are there? N vertices are there. How many edges are there in a complete graph? NC2. How many triangles will be there in a complete graph? KN, NC3. So, the NC3 triangles, I, my key will be in one triangle. The rest of the triangle, I will have uh, for confusing the person. So, this is the idea here. So, this is my idea. Take a complete graph, encrypt, and using the uh, single cycle as a key, all other things will be floating there uh, to just confuse the people who receive the graph. Let us see the example. I am taking a number n equal to 363. It's divisible by 3. If it's not divisible by 3, that's next example. Suppose 364 not divisible by 3, remainder. So uh, that is next example. So 363, my first example, divisible by 3. Let me use the magic constant, which are I am magic constant, k equal to I am interested. Take the magic constant to be 30. You can change your constant also. I'm taking a complete graph K9. Okay, I am fixing the triangle 
Before fixing the triangle, I will split it into three parts the vertex set. There are nine vertices. Each uh, V1, V2, V3 has three vertices. V1, V4, V7, V2, V5, V8, V3, V6, V9. And you know the edge of the complete graph is VA, VJ. I running from 1 to A9, J running from 1 to A9. Right. So I will take and uh, what I do is uh, I will give the uh, vertices K9 labeled as alpha I. Where alpha takes the residue values, I takes the running number. So what are the first nine numbers? 1 to 9. That is as in for I. I take the value 1, 2, 3. V1 is 1, V2 is 2, V10 is 9. Uh, what is the value of this? Uh, uh, first uh, uh, component of the vertex, it takes the value 0, 1 and 2. What is 0, 1 and 2? The residue class of Z3. A residue class of Z3, 0, 1, 2. These three will be repetition. It will come three times. 0 will come three times, 1 will come three times, 2 will come three times. Next, edge. Edges are labeled beta and gamma. So this is here, the trick place here. I am fixing one triangle. V4, V8, V6, where I am going to hide the key. Okay, then I assign 4, 8, 6 for the bar, and uh, that is my vertex uh, 0, 1, 2 for edges. So, what about the edges? The edges will be labeled like this. Now, before that, we will partition the numbers n to three parts n0, n1, n2. So, here if you look at this uh, partition. Uh, you can do in your own way. I have done here 102, 178, 83. But look at most important thing is take 102. Is it divisible by 3? Uh, yes. Divisible by 3. The remainder is 0. So I keep it as n naught. So the remainder is 3. Okay. What is the remainder when I divide uh, 8, 178 by 3? 178 mod 3 is remainder is 1. N1. 83. Reminder is 2 when I divide by 3. Residue, the residue is 3. Sorry, residue is 2. 83 mod 3 is 2. So N2. So N1 plus N2 plus. If you take any number divisible by 3, if you take any number divisible by 3, split into 3 parts, you can do like this. It is possible. Okay, you try, you take a number, take first component divisible by 3, balance, you will get 2 parts. One will have remainder 1, one will have remainder 2 is possible. Now I fix these three vertices V4, V8, V6. I will draw the edges between them. I create a direction also. I give direction V4, V8. Look at the direction V8, V6, V6, V4. And then I draw the graph. This is my graph. This is my graph. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. First comment 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. Now, what about this magic triangle? Look at the orientation goes like this. The magic triangle. V4, V8. I'm giving 18. Then I'm giving 16 for V8, V2. And then I give the third number. This is the edges. 18, 16, 20. <coughs> second component. The second component is a running number from 10 to NC2. 10, 9C2. Up to 36. Fine. But here, what is the first component? First component is... Take the number n0, n1, n2, n0 divided by 3, the floor value, 83 by 2 floor value. That is the quotient when I divide by the, the quotient. The quotient, the reminder is 0, 1, 2. The quotient is 178 by 3, the quotient I am writing here. Similarly, 83 by the quotient by 3. And that is going to be 59, 27, 37. 59. 37 30 open. Uh, so the here <coughs> sorry, the magic key number is 30. So from 30 I, I, 4, 4 and 8, 4 and 8, 16, 18. 30 minus 30 minus 8 plus 6. This is 8 and this is 6 V6. That gives me 16. 30 minus 6 plus 4, 20. So this is how I put for these three vertices. <laughs> so this is my main idea, magic key. 30 minus the vertices, 8 plus 4, then 8 plus 6, 6 plus 4. <coughs> 
so this is for the example for general i have the formula here constant k minus p plus q k minus q plus r k minus this is vp vq vq vr vr the suffix of this n1 n2 n3 i put it red color for that. so quotient and the running number quotient running number quotient number. is there now the rest of the edges i do in my order the algorithm is there i don't want to show that algorithm now here and the paper it's the paper so this is what happens general case and uh, balance uh, i post it from 10 to 40 away for all other cycles this is the graph what do you understand this graph is confusing the person who receives it's in the air now the graph is in the air uh, the vertices 0 1 1 2 2 3 0 4 1 5 2 6 1 get this 59 <coughs> the 59 34 20 is a repetition but uh, all the places this repetition look at this the main for for us to identify this is the, but it will be red color we are given red color for you to read identifies fine the person now goes he starts to decrypt we can put the label in the matrix we can put the label in the matrix and uh, uh, we can it's a symmetric matrix the ag then calculate <coughs> i plus j plus i j into d a g so on but let me go to the figure not matrix if the person has identified if the person has identified oh. hello if the person has identified the triangle then he will decrypt it but how to identify the triangle if you look at the triangle you get the magic constant in only one triangle all the edges will have magic constant only in one triangle that triangle is this triangle look at this triangle 8 plus 18 plus 4 30 4 6 uh, this edge is 30 similarly here also you get 30 the three edges of the single triangle will be magic all other triangles will have anti magic that is the application of labeling here out of nc3 triangles only one triangle will have magic labeling all the constants the rest of the triangles will have anti magic labeling so that is the beauty of magic so i have found out that i know that this is going to be edge magic cycle c3 i captured this red color cycle i decrypt it look at this how to decrypt it sigma 3 into f5 va vj plus fvj 59 into 3 plus 1 direction is this 27 into 3 plus 2 direction is like this 34 into 3 plus 0 direction like this so 3 into 59 plus 1 3 into 27 plus 2 3 into 34 this is going to be 363 fine suppose if it is not divisible by 3 that is the next example 367 i cannot break into three numbers n not n1 n2 like previous case one will be repeated either n1 and n2 both may be residue 1 this both may be residue 0 this both may be residue 2 so here n0 is giving residue 0 n2 is giving zero. it's not possible to make 0 1 2 if it is not divisible by 3 so this is the uh, this is the beautiful number theory concept so i am applying the number theory so do the same procedure again the orientation will not be in each direction previously in each direction now here it's opposing look at the direction is opposing Here I come this, come this, this opposing. So this is the difference between previous example and this example. So when you decrypt it, you get fifty-nine <coughs> into three plus one, thirty-four into three plus zero, twenty-nine into three plus zero. It's opposing here. So not plus two plus zero. Three sixty-seven. So how to find the how to vary the magic constant again it's an arithmetic it is again a, a purely graph theory concept a triangle how to fix the uh, magic constant uh, that is another beautiful work because the mathematicians are always uh, 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 think about the lower bound upper bound here so only what is the lower bound of k what is the upper bound of k? that is again a graph theory work a beautiful concept. so similarly the like your k9 i can do for uh, what is a uh, path graphs i can take a path graph i can prepare duplication very vertex i put an edge over a triangle i get plenty of triangles 
I want triangles for me. And I, this is easy compared to previous. That can also be done. The proposal system, as time is elapsing, I quickly uh, run this uh, uh, idea of encrypting using path graph. To prepare more triangles uh, than I do. Not only triangles, even pentagons. Uh, I can think of pentagons. But again, the process becomes a very, very lengthy one. This is how it goes. And uh, uh, this is how it looks. Dec decrypting the what we have done, we have to decrypt. These are the references. Uh, the uh, 2005, this one. Then my student along with the in uh, 2012. Then the 2013 Galen Rosa. This is a very good book uh, to read. Uh, Kenneth Roshan is also good. And uh, we have other basic number theory books. Uh, uh, well, yes. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you. Any questions you can ask? Dear participants, any questions? Ida. Ida. Mm -hmm. Sir, excellent presentation, sir. Very oh. informative session, sir. Mm. Karna Lakshmi, ma'am, yes. you please proceed. Vote of thanks, ma'am. Karna Lakshmi, ma'am. Ma yeah. You please proceed. Vote of thanks, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Ah, ma'am. Yeah, I thank all the participants uh, um, for patient listening. All the best for all the participants there, Peter and Javis. Thank you, all the participants, organizers. Thank you, thank you. Ma'am, that was a lot, sir. Ma'am, ma ma you can say vote of thanks, ma'am. Okay, thank you, ma'am. This is my privilege to say vote of thanks, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. It's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. I, on behalf of PG and Research Department of Mathematics, Hindustan College of Arts and Science, extends my thanks to Almighty Post and, and our managing trustee, Srimati Saraswati Kandayan, and Dr. Priya Satish Prabhu, and our principal, Dr. Priya Ponnusami, and our convener and HOD ma'am, Dr. S. Anuratha. I extend my hearty vote of thanks to our chief guest of this evening dr baskar babu ji sir spared the time with us for his great presentation of encryption of graph through networks we learned about the magical triangles and the magical graph sir it is very interesting and informative session sir thank you sir thank you. and i extend to thanks to all the participants for this enormous cooperation in this organization thank you ma'am thank, thank you sir yeah the people have asked about the uh, mail id it is available on anani's website mail id is in anani's website yeah all the papers can be downloaded freely in the google if you type them my name the google the papers will come very easily no problem thank you Really, thanks a lot, sir. Wonderful session, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, dear participants. We'll meet in tomorrow's session. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I request all the participants kindly leave the session, leave the meeting. Thank you all.
Excuse me, sir.